Hello again. We are with our next session. We have a team. Uh, we have three speakers right now. Everyone is from Aquvelon. Uh, so first we have Alex. He's a program manager at Aquvelon and leader of professional services delivery. He focuses on helping customers design and build technological solutions. Welcome, Alex. And we also have Arthur. He is a technical lead at Aquelon. He has a wide range of strong practical experience in big data, machine learning, and web development. And he is Beam and Dataflow templates contributor. Oh, wow. And we uh, welcome Arthur. And we also have Ilya. He's a technical lead at Aquelon, where he's focused on data engineering. Uh, Ilya has a strong experience developing big data technologies and machine learning systems. He is an Apache Beam and Google Data Flow templates contributor. And uh, guess what? They are going to be explaining data flow templates, how do they work, and uh, how to create them. So, welcome, welcome all the speakers, and go ahead. Thank you, Mara. Thank you for the introductions. Hello, Beam community. It's our pleasure to be here. And uh, welcome to Dataflow Templates session. Today, we're going to present what Dataflow Templates are, an example use case that demonstrates a Dataflow Templates benefits. And we'll go into some highlights of the solution and demo uh, an example solution that we built. Uh, we also will talk about how to get started contributing uh, an open source uh, Dataflow template to the community, and we'll have a Q&A session at the end. Aqualon is a custom software engineering company, Google Cloud Partner, headquartered in Seattle, Washington, with engineering offices in Europe and North America. I'm a program manager with Aqualon, and together with Arthur Hanin and Ilya Kozarev, we focus on data, analytics, and machine learning solutions. Our team contributed several Apache Beam complete examples and data flow templates based on Google Cloud customers' use cases and other enhancements as well. What is a Beam pipeline? Pipeline is a flow of operations in Beam. In the simplest way, it starts with an I.O. read, then a series of data transforms are applied, and I.O. write transform writes data to an output sync. Users run pipeline from their development environment. The Apache Beam SDK stages files on Google Cloud Storage, creates a job request file, and submits the file to Dataflow service. Dataflow templates is a way to package and stage pipelines that is easy to share on your project in your organization and does not require setting up an Apache Beam development environment in order to just create Dataflow job. Template has two phases. Construction phase is implementing pipeline, compiling it into execution graph and staging on Google Cloud. And execution phase allows to run templates using Google Cloud Console, like you see on the screenshot, uh, a command line gcloud tool, or REST API calls without the need of the Apache Beam development environment and associated dependencies on your local machine. Runtime parameters allow to customize execution of pipeline and templates. Running pipeline does not require recompiling the code every time. There are two template types. Classic templates are permanently fixed execution graphs that are stored on Google Cloud Storage. Classic templates require pipeline code modification to implement value provider interface if you want to support parameters and run variable when the template is run. For example, if you want to pass a name of the PubSub subscription to your template. And a change in the template, like adding a new input source, Google Cloud Storage, for example, will require to recompile the template. There is a newer, uh, newer template types, Flex templates. Flex templates package the existing pipeline as a Docker image and stage Docker image on 
your projects contain a registry. They also create template specification file and store it on Google Cloud Storage. Then to execute Flex template, just refer to the template spec file. Based on our experience, Flex templates provide more benefits and easier to use than classic. Benefits of Flex templates are dynamic execution graph that is constructed and also validated at job launch time based on final parameters that user supplies to the template. For example, a template can support PubSub and GCS input sources and will construct pipeline execution graph based on the supplied parameters to specify the input source. Flex templates eliminated need for value provider interface, improving developer experience and expanding IO options available. Creating data flow flex templates have three steps, implement pipeline, create metadata and build the template. We will dive into steps to create pipeline and template in our presentation and cover in the demo. We will start introducing with introducing a use case where template was helpful to support a variety of runtime options for the pipeline. Customer use case was to ingest large volumes of data that included sensitive data like credit card numbers or PII and a third party data protection service was used for tokenization, converting sensitive data elements like credit card numbers into non-sensitive characters, a token representation that, is, that can be safely stored. Based on access role, a user may see a token representation data, uh, a partially masked data like last four digits of a credit card number, or an original credit card number. Dataflow provides an auto-scaling, fully managed cloud service to run Apache Beam pipelines with consumption-based pricing and was great for this data processing. Challenge was that out of the box, there was no support for calls to third-party service to tokenize the data. We built custom data pipeline to implement this and the, temp, the pipeline also needed to support different data formats, different input sources and output sinks. But the actual processing of the data remained same. Templatizing this pipeline helped to support all different IO and execution options mm -hmm. using template parameters and making, uh, making a template uh, great, easy to use, uh, building block here. Next, Arthur will guide us through the architecture and technical highlights of this solution. Thank you, thank you, Alex. Thank you. So, as you already know, my name is Arthur, and I am the one who will guide you through the overview of the whole architecture, and then I will highlight the most interesting parts of our solution. And we'll start with the overview of the architecture. As you can see at the slide, the pipeline supports different sources and sinks. It can take JSONs, CSVs, or Avros from GCS, and stream data from PubSub. Then it tokenizes data via remote REST calls to the third-party data security service. You can see that this service interacts itself with the policy storage. And finally, the pipeline outputs tokenized data into one of the supported sinks. These sinks are Cloud Bigtable, BigQuery, and GCS. During the development, we faced two main challenges, uh, which you can see marked with three orange arrows on the slide. The first challenge was about supporting several input sources and output sinks. On the diagram, you can see, you can see it on the left and the right side from the data flow template block. The second challenge was supporting and optimizing performance for calls to third-party REST service. This one can be seen a bit higher than the data flow template block. We're going to take a look at the challenge I have just mentioned and see what the stateful to fun words in our diagram mean. And we'll start from the concept of this mysterious stateful to fun. Even though there is no much mystery, its name is nice and self-explanatory. 
Moreover, yesterday Ken shared great deep insights of stateful and timely processing. We today will take a look at it from another angle as Beam users. All right, let's begin diving into this. A brief explanation for the DoFund may, may sound like this. DoFund performs a particular transformations over each element. What kind of transformations? The ones that you told it to apply. A stateful DoFund expectedly means that our DoFund has a state. Thus, it has the ability to access persistent mutable state while processing each input element. Very important to mention that a state cell in, in Beam is scoped to a key plus window pair. Let's take a look at the diagram a bit closely. At the first glance, it may seem that every input element which is presented via red squares goes into the state on the right, which is illustrated via red triangles. But it's not the only case. You may have such, and we even will take a look at one shortly, but it's not necessary. These red triangles can be anything that you want to save at the particular processing step. So, as you might guess, we should somehow use these triangles to produce red circles to call our DuFont truly stateful. Here are some examples where this concept becomes handy. The first one that comes to my mind is the duplication. We want to keep a Boolean value to distinguish if we saw the particular key before or not. Another example is arbitrary but consistent index assignment. Here we want to keep an index in memory and increment it for each data element. The last example I'd like to come up with is anomaly detection using some machine learning models. For example, we can keep machine learning model and its last prediction for the particular user and then use it to make further predictions. Now let's move to our case where each element goes into the persistent state and after some period of time comes out. Well, this picture removes all suspense. Yes, we use the persistent state as a buffer for our elements. The challenge was to optimize the communication with the REST service. On this diagram, the REST service is illustrated by an elegant gray cloud on the right. Stateful DoFun helped us to buffer and budge data into bundles that worker can send in one request. We even managed to maintain ordering of data between these batches. Well, the time has come to see the implementation of Stateful DoFun. This code snippet is based on the Beam documentation for Stateful Processing. I can't help but say that the Beam documentation is very helpful for both starting with Beam and going deep down into use cases, technical blocks, or designs. And I'm thankful to Beam community for providing these resources. I'd like to highlight the important parts of this DoFun, starting with states that are specified here. You can see two of them at the very top of the snippet, buffer and count. Both of them have a type of state spec. Buffer, as you may see, is a back state, so we have some back with events. We actually add events into this bug. Count is a value of integer that we increment in order to optimally keep track of the amount of the elements inside of the bag. In this code snippet, we can also see how we update our states. At the beginning, we increment count and add current element to buffer. Then, when count becomes greater than some defined threshold, we process all elements from the buffer and finally clear both states. We didn't stop on pure stateful the fun. We also added a timer to it. We came up to the situation with the streaming data when the actual data may appear after some significant period of time. We didn't want the external service to idle, and that's how we added the flexibility. Now there is no matter the pipeline is streaming one or batch, such construction handles both situations. An initial stateful DoFun can be quite simply extended with a timer. The declaration is almost the same. As you can see, it uses predefined timer specifications. Then we set the timer somewhere at the process function, in our case, at the very beginning. And the final step is to add actions that will be performed after the timer expiration. It can be done via a function with a non-timer annotation as the last one on this slide. This code snippet plus the previous one are actually everything what is needed to implement data batching. In fact, if you need to implement any custom stateful processing, stateful DoFun is definitely purposed for this. However, if your ca case is similar with ours and you're just looking for the data batching, there is another alternative. And it is called group into batches. I'd like to share with you insights we gained during our own researches. 
When our team was at the very beginning of the development process, we found stateful Dufan concept. And after some diving into it, we were amazed of how easily we can solve our challenge with batching. We implemented our solution, created a PR, and then our reviewer gave us a hint and suggested to consider group into batches. We took a look at it and found out what it is. First, group into batches, well, surprisingly groups your data into batches, the same way a stateful Dufan has a state. Behind this transform lays stateful Dufan, and the actual implementation has a lot in common with code snippets we saw a few slides ago. It is optimized in different ways. There is a data prefetching that speeds up data loading and data flow runner knows how to treat this particular transform to parallelize processing via auto sharding. Finally, group into batches is supported in both Java and Python Apache Beam SDKs. You can see this nice Python example with fruits and vegetables on the right side of the slide. No more circles and triangles. Notice that even if some key doesn't have enough data to form a full pack of fruits, group into batches doesn't forget about them outputting as much as it can. Next, we will see how we enhanced our template with this. This code snippet uh, presents a p-transform that takes a p-collection of key integer and value row pairs as input and outputs p-collection tuple. Please notice that we use some row class to represent our data. Now let's take a bit closer look at applying our group into batches transform. Firstly, we specify the size of the batch to pass it to a back state hidden behind. Secondly, we provide a maximum duration for buffering, which is actually passed to the timer we talked about pretty recently. And finally, we apply our tokenization function that takes every batch, sends it to the remote service, and then parses a response to a collection of successfully processed elements and a collection of the ones that fail for some reason. Well, that's it. Now we can batch and beam everything we want. Can we replace every stateful Dufan with group into batches? Well, at least not yet. There are still many situations when stateful Dufan comes more handy than group into batches. To sum up, stateful Dufan is a great and flexible way to customize any stateful and timely processing. Group into batches is a nicely optimized out of the box transform that saves your development time and covers every batch batching buffering case. That is why deduplication and arbitrary but consistent indexing should be implemented with pure stateful processing because they don't require any batches. On the other hand, external API calls and data preparation for machine learning models are natural candidates to use batching and optimize it via out of the box solution. Remember another challenge I talked about? Yes, the one that refers to many input sources and output things. There was a reason why we noted row class on the previous code snippet. I want to pass the word to my colleague and a good friend of mine, Ilya, who will walk you through our architecture design to address this challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Arto. Thank you. Let's discuss data representation. As we mentioned before, one of the biggest challenge what we had during the template implementation was data representation. At start of development, we planned to support multiple data sources and data things for pipeline. And what is more important for us, we wanted to be able to scale to new sources and things with the minimum implementation time. To achieve this goal, we needed a common abstraction for data representation. As we know, in BIM, we have an SMP collection, but the type of element in this collection must, must meet our requirements. Let's think about requirements for data representation. First, what came in my mind, it should be a common abstraction which we would use with different input formats. It will help us to make our business logic in the pipeline independent of input format. Second, we want to make the transformation to this common abstraction easier to develop. We want to have a common pattern or interface to implement new transforms and will be great to have already implemented transforms to this format included in BIM SDK. And last important thing, what we need to keep in mind, it's serialization. We, we want to have a balanced abstraction, what will be comfortable to use Asian code and, uh, it, and effective for serialization. 
because as we know in data processing and big data world each extra kilobytes for element might be potentially turned to hundreds and hundreds extra gigabytes for all data set let's take a look at the common approaches for data representation in general all existing common solution we can split into two categories first text-based uh, formats such as xml json csv or yaml that's easy to understand and we can usually uh, use it in uh, our code using different libraries like a json to work with json but there is common issue for those formats serialization because in general it's string representation format with not very effective serialization process the second group binary based formats like Aura, protobuf parquet and message pack in this group we can highlight Aura and parquet as the more popular for data processing Aura is row oriented format and parquet is column oriented format was optimized for java serialization both is it a good equipment choice when we talk about big data process but from the beam usage perspective, in case uh, of when we don't want to use generic records, we need to implement additional classes to represent our, uh, our, our data as a Java object. That's absolutely fine for some cases where we have a strong data structure and when we don't plan to process any different structures and formats in the same pipeline. But in our case, we try to create a really flexible solution uh what could process different data formats and structures in this case we need to use something more generic and flexible instead our or parquet and what is beam row beam row fully covered our requirements beam row is a part of beam schema api and consequently it supports primitives in beam row schema this often much primitive than most programming language like uh, integer, long strings, and so on. Also, what important for us, ordering in the schema will be the same as the ordering in data. What about serialization? In Beam SDK, we have raw coder, and raw coder is quite effective for serialization. And yes, someone from you might say our is more effective for serialization. Yes, that's true but benefits of raw make it more preferable for us in beam using utilities included in beam sdk we can parse beam schema from json and it makes raw a fairly generic solution for us also beam raw supports beam sql it's very perspective feature what provide us with zeta sql syntax to make sql queries to raw basic recollection it might improve analytics in beam and reduce Java or Python knowledge to implement BIM pipelines. How BIM Row solve our challenges with multiple sources and things? We made architecture in BIM Row in center and implement whole business logic in our pipeline around the BIM Row. To support multiple sources and things, we use simple function to transform to BIM Row uh, source format to BIM Row and beam roll to the destination format. And to be able to scale to new sources and things, we have a pattern to implement new transformation from and to beam roll. For the first look, implementation of transforms into beam roll and from beam roll might seem too hard. However, that's not. What else is great about beam roll? There are a lot of implemented transforms that already included in beam SDK. So, let's take a look how you can use beam row in the pipeline and yes it's time for a live demo there is demo plan i want to make template implementation overview i'll demonstrate how you can organize your pipeline code structure together we will implement new source in the pipeline it will be parquet format and we will use parquet io we will implement transformation from parquet format to beam row and at the end, I'll show you how easy you can build data flow template from the pipeline and use it in Google Cloud Platform environment. So 
What we need to do in this demonstration? We need to read parquet file from Google Cloud Storage using the schema in JSON format to produce beam row, tokenize it using uh, our example of data tokenization, and write back to the Google Cloud Storage using CSV. All feature except parquet uh, already implemented in this example pipeline. And our challenge for this demonstration, implement the new source, it, uh, it will be parquet. So let's go to the main class of the template. This class is very similar as uh, any uh, other BIM pipelines. We create pipe, pipeline object, apply necessary transformation for key collections, and call pipeline run. But one thing, uh, one point, what I want to uh, what I want to highlight, it's schema. As I mentioned before, we use JSON schema, parse it, and uh, use to produce beam rows and use in row coders. Let's let's take a look again uh, again on the example of schema. The, there is very simple JSON with a collection of fields, and for each field user need to specify a uh, description of the each field. There is name, uh, type, its primitives, mode, it might be required or nullable for nullable fields. Let's go back to main class. This pip pipeline can work with Google Cloud Storage and PubSA, but in this demonstration, let's focus on Google Cloud Storage. GCS IO our own implemented class what contains uh, what contains two important method read and write to read data and write data and also contains uh, methods to uh, convert uh, input format into the beam row so let's think how we can add new source in read method you may see switch case statement but uh, go through the each supported format for Google Cloud Storage. And we need to add new value here. So let's add it, add it in uh, format enum. We will take it from uh, option for the pipeline. Now we can add new case statement. It will uh, go through the parquet value and we need to implement new method. It will be read parquet. Uh, what uh, reads parquet from Google Cloud Storage convert into beam row because read method requires to return P collection of row. And we can uh, call new method here. So let's uh, think about parameters for new method. Because it's entry point for pipeline, we need to apply I/O transforms to the pipeline object, and first element will be pipeline. Looking ahead, I tell you about Parquet I/O. We will use Parquet I/O to read Parquet files from file system from Google Cloud Storage, and Parquet I/O requires schema. But what's in schema? What produces uh, using JSON uh, file? And let's implement new method in the GCSIO. So, uh, how we can read any files from file system? There are two ways: using file I/O with uh, generic types, or using some specific I/O transform for some specific format. In case of Parquet, we could use uh, Parquet I/O to read files. Let's apply to the key collection. Uh, apply and call parquet IO. To produce builder to read uh, parquet files, we need to uh, call few methods. It's read method and from method. Read method requires the schema as an argument, but it's not actual uh, beam schema. It's our schema because Parquet IO implements with our schema. But likely we have our utils that easily could convert uh, BIM schema into our schema. 
and it requires green schematizer. To from method, uh, we need to pass file pattern uh, uh, what uh, will be passed to Google Cloud Storage. And in this example, we have specific parameter to get file pattern. So, in general, to read parquets, that's all. Let's take a look what uh, type return as parquet I.O. So, let's pick collection of generic records. But we need a collection of row. And our next step, convert generic records into beam row. Easiest way to convert one type to different type in beam, uh, it's using uh, map elements into a specific type descriptor. Let's use it. Uh, just apply map elements into to, uh, oops, sorry, to parquet records. Yes. And specify type descriptor of row class because we need row as a uh, output type. So, on morphing, what uh, you need to specify using map elements into it's via, and you need to pass serializable function to via method. Likely, it also contains in our utils, and we can uh, call methods from our utils to get necessary function. Our utils get generic records to row function, and it requires bin schema. So, that's it. Last thing what we need to do is coder specifying. Because when we transform one type to different type in BIM, it's uh, requires to specify coder. That coder, uh, row coder of BIM schema. Yes, that's it. I think that's all. And we can return the collection of row and use it in a switch case statement uh, in parquet value. And you may see, we also have simple function for, uh, for any different supported formats. And uh, we don't need to change anything else in our pipeline because our main business logic uh, implemented with beam rows. Before we start build template, let me share one more difference uh, between pipeline and template. That's metadata file. You could uh, implement JSON file, name it uh, metadata, and uh, specify here description of uh, your template. There is name, description, and list of parameters. For each parameters, you could specify name, label, help text, what helps user uh, to pass uh, right values in the specific parameters. Param time, it could be primitive or Google provided types. Is optional flag, it could be true or false for optional required parameters and regular expression. You can add your own validations to the specific parameter. In this case, we need to add new value, par get here and let's add it also in help text. So I think we're ready to build a pipeline to the data flow template. I prepared build script and there are only two commands. Let's run it because it uh, will take a bit time. And while, it uh, while it's running, let's discuss about building uh, commands. First, you need to package your Java classes into the single jar included all dependencies using My Maven or Gradle, for example. Next, you, you need to build data flow template using Google Cloud command line tool. You, you need to uh, call gcloud data flow flex template build and pass here few necessary parameters. First, you need to pass 
path to Google Cloud Storage, where Google Cloud command line tool will store JSON file with manifest of template. That includes a uh, metadata file with uh, list of parameters and link to Docker image in Google Cloud registry. You also need to specify path to the specific Google Cloud registry image and SDK language. Uh, in this case, it will be Java, and you can specify uh, Python, for example. And uh, next one parameter, so uh, let's base image for the Flex template. Uh, you could use Google provided images or build your own image uh, based on Google provided images. And last three parameters, that's uh, uh, just metadata file, jar file, what we built using Maven, and environment variable with link to main class of template. So while it building, let's review uh, project structure and uh, take a look how you can organize your template code. In this example, we split all our Java classes by separate packages uh, based on his responsibilities. First package, options. This package contains all logic around the pipeline parameters and options. Second one, templates. Templates contains main class of the template. Third one, transforms. Transforms contains uh, all transforms, all necessary transforms, what we need to apply to P collections. And IO sub package contains uh, IO transforms, our own implemented transforms to convert uh, source uh, format to the beam row and beam row to the destination form. Last package, utils. We contained here uh, all supported classes, for example, to work with schema, to parse uh, JSON schema, or building CSVR re records. So let's take a look uh, on build command. Yes, and uh, it's close to uh, get built. And yes, that's done. So we're ready to run our template. and. Uh, there are three, few ways to run template. It's uh, using Google Cloud command line tool, using REST call uh, with any REST clients, and using Google Cloud web console to run template manually. In this demonstration, we will go, uh, we will go through the two, uh, two approaches to run template. It's a Google Cloud command line tool. We run a uh, data flow job using uh, command line tool. And uh, we will go to the Google Cloud console to run it manually. There are just uh, Google Cloud uh, data flow flex template run command with passing uh, template location, region, and list of parameters. We will go through those parameters in Cloud console and let's just run it uh, from uh, terminal, yes, job is running, and go to the web console. So to run job manually, you need to go to the data flow service in Google Cloud Platform. As you may see, our job from command line is uh, queued and it will be running. To run new job using Google Cloud uh, Console, you need to click create job from uh, template. You need to pass name, choose the region, uh, choose custom template in this Dropbox. Uh, you need to go for the Google Cloud storage and choose JSON file that was stored with uh, Google Cloud command line tool. And all necessary par parameters fields will be generated automatically uh, based on metadata file. So, so uh, to save our time, yeah, uh, I already passed all necessary parameters in necessary fields. And let's pass to uh, parking schema, what we showed before, 
we need to specify parameter. Let me demonstrate how validation from regular expression work. Let's just specify XML and we have error message. We need to specify parquet, of course. And uh, we need to specify file pattern to input files. I want to read any parquet files from uh, Google Cloud Storage. Also, we need to specify tokenization URI and batch size for our stateful processing. We will buffer 10 elements before we send it into third party REST service. We need to specify output path and output format, whether this sees you. So I think we're ready to run job. And while we're trying, it needs a bit time to provide some resources. Let's take a look on uh, the curious job, what is running state. As you may see, uh, we have two steps, read parquet and next step map elements. We didn't name it uh, for some specific name and it just map elements. Read parquet, it's uh, our own implemented uh, Parquet reading using Parquet.io and map elements. It's transformation from generic records to beam row using map elements into and specific function. Next two steps, it's uh, tokenization steps. And last two steps, it's conversion uh, beam row to CSV format and write CSV to Google Cloud Storage. So that's all from uh, live demo. Uh, site and let's go back to the presentation. Recapping the demo, uh, we took a look at the approach to organize template code structure. We saw what is the metadata file and how you can describe template parameters and add some validations. We discussed schemas and mentioned it at the approaches how it uh, can be represented in JSON format. We've implemented reading functionality from Parquet uh, files and transform Parquet, uh, Parquet generic records to beam row. And uh, as the end, we built and run template in Google Cloud Platform. It was really easy. To find this template and search for more use cases, you can take a look to the GitHub repository. There are a lot of implemented Google provided and community templates that can be helpful. To share your own template with community, you might contribute them to the data flow templates repository. It's easy to get started to these contributions. Just fork repository to develop templates and pipeline uh, following the style guides and base practices sign contribution license agreement, submit pull request to merge. It will go through the code review to get merged into the repository. Let's summarize our session, what we learned today. We discussed data flow templates, difference between pipeline and template, and how flex templates package pipelines into containers for easier sharing and running. We went through an example user scenario for data flow templates and how to implement a scalable architecture for interacting with third party REST service using BIM. We dive deep into stateful processing, use cases and recommendation for stateful DUFAN and group into batches. We learned how BIM role can be used for data representation and demonstrated benefits of BIM schema and API and row as a common abstraction. Finally, we look at how to get started contributing templates to open source community. Thank you for joining us in Dataflow template session. We are happy to answer of any of your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, this was like, a, did you uh, practice for this session? <laughs> you were very coordinating when, when each one started and the next one follows. So 
I, I hope, I, I know of hope. I'm sure this will be a very uh, good session for everyone. Yes, we have uh, some questions for you. Uh, first is question, let me see. For Arthur, well, it, it is, he is tagging Arthur. Yes, yes, uh, it's me. <laughs> it seems through by the example is not working. Yeah. Uh, he's sharing a screenshot at the Slack, so you may want to go to the Slack and answer the question there. There, I can he... answer there, or can yeah, just say a couple of words here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, basic, basically, the example that I showed is 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 with the the code snippets. They are quite quite generic. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's not a, the totally working code. Yeah, but that's true. The, it misses. It, it there there is a missing key value. Uh, key value like uh, typing yeah so these events they should be wrapped with key values yeah and everything works fine then okay. so yeah that's that's actually the the, the, the answer for this question <laughs> okay and um, pradeep is asking is beam row available for both python and java sdk yeah uh i think it's uh, available for java sdk and as i know uh, for Python SDK, uh, data frame API is a uh, roadmap in Beam and in uh, implementing state. So, and it will, it will operate with uh, Beam Roll 2. Okay. And here's a question from Pierre. Does Beam Row support schema evolution? For example, a lot row want to have different schema than row 2. And those beam row support sparse objects, example, efficiently ignore all keys with null values. So let's try to answer to this question. Uh, in beam rows schema API, we could produce different rows based on previous one. For example, you could implement transform, beam transform, and implement some logic to convert uh first row to second row and uh, inherence any uh, any requires fields for example and uh, second question about uh about null values uh, does beam row support sparse objects effective row all case with no values oh so let's let's think i about can catch it. this one yeah. yeah yeah as i understand this so uh, the thing is that uh you have to specify so since since beam row has its own schema you have to specify the field as nullable so and if the field is nullable then yes you may uh, have this sparse objects yeah with null values <clears throat> but if there is a it is a required field then you can't actually parse null and it will argue. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, about efficiency, I I don't think there is there are such optimizations. Yeah, but don't you know, Ilya, about <laughs> handling nulls? No, I don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so seems like no, if we don't know this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll say no, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, if you figure out that did work, I mean, it it does something with the null values, you can come back and let us know. <laughs> Another question is, does Beam Row also support different RDMS I/O like MySQL or Progress SQL? So, uh, I think to uh, convert uh, Beam Row to the destination format, for example, to uh, GDBC prepared statement in Java to uh, insert into MySQL or Postgres, you could use specific uh, transform from Beam SDK. And uh, I think it's not supported directly with MySQL and pa uh, Postgres SQL because it's Beam Row abstraction. Uh, for Beam SDK. PostgreSQL, sorry, I I misspelled yeah. that. And I have a question for Arthur. Is there a limit in size of what can be stored in states? 
full history. <laughs> Example full history. If not, which current database is it possible to choose another database that uh, will allow for it? Like big table or something else? Yeah, that's that's a great question, actually. And uh, yes, uh, I can definitely say that yes, these states they have limit. Uh, it, it, well, data flow runner actually uses windmill database behind. Yeah, but uh, it depends on runner. Yeah, <clears throat> and of course, if you if you want to put their full history, it will blow up your memory and everything will fail. So please don't do this. Uh, yeah, and um, you actually can replace um, windmill with your own choice of database, but it takes a lot of pain to do this because <laughs> actually you have to implement this in runner yourself. So you have to dig deep into these implementations and make it work. So yeah, well, actually, <laughs> uh, I think uh, windmill, windmill, yes, and this uh, already implemented uh, solution is the best for this purposes. Okay. Uh, here is another question for Ilya. Uh, is it possible to dynamically change row code there? I think to change row coder, we need to uh, apply a set coder to P collection and change coder when we need. Uh, if uh, we change schema, we need to change coder. Okay. Uh, let me see. Somebody looks to be typing a question. Um, Yes, it's another question for Arthur. Is there a plan to have windmill supporting bigger data size? Well, honestly, I haven't asked <laughs> people who work with <laughs> uh, developing a wind, uh, like enhancing windmill behind the scenes of data for runner. So yeah, I'm sorry, can't can't really answer <laughs> this. Yeah. He's typing another question. I, I'm waiting a little bit. Uh, I think this is going to be our, our last session uh, for today. Yes, and also, sorry. I um, uh, yes, yes, Alex. Thank you. Uh, I uh, wanted to mention that um, demo that uh, Ilya. Uh, performed today uh, in the session is also available as a code lab on GitHub. So yeah. oh, if, uh, anyone wants to, I know it was uh, pretty fast to go through all the steps and there is some uh, setup needed to, uh, to really get the, that environment uh, for the demo. So we have that available in GitHub uh, repo for BIM College day three today, uh, data flow templates. Perfect, thank you. Well, thank you guys. Uh, there were just uh, thank you messages, no more questions. But anyway, if you still have questions, I'm sure that uh, Arthur, Alex, and Ilya will be around at the Slack. Uh, keep answering. And I think you will have more sessions, right? During BIM College. Um, this is nope. this is only session, but uh, we'll be in, okay. uh, in Slack channel uh, and okay. uh, uh, we have a question to follow up there as well. Perfect. Well, thank, thank you. you all. Thank you, BIM community. Thank you, Mara, for having us uh, here today. Yeah, thank you thank very you. much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.